Now, before starting the video, I would like to talk about the sponsor of this video, KeysFan. KeysFan.com offers cheap and legal OEM software keys in an easy way. You can activate software such as Windows and Microsoft Office in a fast and reliable way with these keys that are 100% official and suitable for online activation. Moreover, they offer lifetime after sales support in addition to 24 by seven customer support. The Happy New Year software special sale is live right now. So don't miss out Keys Fan. Upgrade your software at unbeatable prices today. Add the product you need to your cart and catch 52% discount for Windows series with RTG 52 and 62% discount for Microsoft Office and bundle with RTG 62. Don't forget to check the descriptions for details. What's going on everyone? RGB Tech here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at a brand new Windows emulator designed specifically for low-end Android devices. This is WinLater Tiny Version A lightweight edition focused on low RAM and low power Snapdragon devices. Let's head over to the releases section. All right, so this is WinLater Tiny Version 9. Tiny P Root is a modified and optimized version of P Root. In this update, this version brings several key improvements, like the new color scheme for a fresh look with faster loading and better performance, ultra-wide full-screen support for a more immersive gaming experience, updated components including Mesa Turnip, DXVK, and Box64 to latest builds, HDR graphics, support for improved visuals, along with minor bug fixes and optimizations. All right, now let's head over to the Assets section. Simply download and install the package, once it's installed, tap on Done. Now, I'll close everything. Open WinLater Tiny. As usual, allow permission. As you can see, it's currently running on the latest 9.0.5 build. Now, they've mentioned that some games are designed to run at 600p or higher resolution, focusing on lower-end devices. The phone I'm using right now is the Samsung S21 FE, powered by the Snapdragon 888, which, of course, is a high-end device. Next, let's head over to settings. Set the box 64 version currently, 0.3.3 is the latest. You can install various versions of box 64. For example, I'll choose 0.2.8, I'll install this version. Similarly, we also have 0.3.1, which is quite stable, and 0.3.2 as well. Now choose the version you prefer and set the box 64 preset to performance. Add a create a custom preset and set the Dynarec safe flags value to zero and the forward value to 512. Once done, tap OK. Select the custom preset and save your settings. Add a new container and choose the screen resolution. There are different screen sizes with various aspect ratios available down to as low as 400 by 300 P. I'll go with this resolution. Set the graphics driver to Turnip or if you're using an unsupported Snapdragon device, you can choose the Vortec driver. If you're using a Mali GPU, go with VirGL. Both Vortec and VirGL are universal drivers. In configuration, choose the Turnip driver version based on your preference. Then, select DXVK. Also, in configuration, set the DXVK version based on your preference. I always recommend going with DXVK 1.10.3 as it's stable also currently one of the best stable versions, as well as 2.4.1. For frame rate, you can set a limit. If you're using a lower-end Snapdragon, I recommend 30 FPS. For even lower-end devices like the Snapdragon 680, set it to 1520 FPS. Set the device memory limit accordingly, especially if you're using a low RAM device. For the audio driver, choose Pulse Audio. In Wine configuration, set the GPU video memory size to maximum, or if you're using a low-end device, choose two gigs. In environment variables, set the Mesa shader cache to 1024 megabytes. Now, in the advanced section, set the startup selection to aggressive and select Windows 10 as the version. For processor affinity, enable all CPU cores. Once that's done, save the container. Now boot the container. All right, now let's first check out the direct 3D test. As you can see, we're getting better frame performance with the Turnip version. One more thing, let's also install the NVIDIA FaceX driver. Now it's time for the test. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi and enable enhanced processing for better performance.
As you can see, we're getting much more stable FPS now. However, I still recommend using the Game Fusion emulator for even better optimized performance. I've tested it on both low-end and high-end devices, and it offers better stability, even at native screen resolutions. But if you're using a very low-end Snapdragon device, whether you have 6GB of RAM or less, this is still a great option for smoother performance. For phones with 4G die of RAM, it's better to go with this WinLater tiny version. You can even set it to the lowest custom settings for better performance. Anyway, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Let me know what you think of this update in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.